Junk Monkey friends, it is Sonya Miller of Junk Monkey Pan Company. I hope your day has been amazing. I gotta tell ya, I had an interesting day. First, I was easing into my day, down in my kitchen, making some blueberry pancakes. I love blueberry pancakes. Yes, I do keto. And I have like gotten this recipe down to a point where I don't have to measure anything out. All I do is throw in one egg, like this size of a stick of butter and um, my almond flour. I get it to the nice consistency, throw it into the pan, let it fry up, and add my sugar-free syrup, and of course, then my fixings. And it is a breakfast made for champs, I'm telling you. Love it with my coffee. Yesterday on the vlog, I told you out of one of the things that I got when I was at Burlington Coat Factory, I also found this cute butter dish. Look at it. It kind of reminded me a little bit of the Pioneer Woman. I just loved all those colors and it had some shabby roses. So it was calling my name for $4.99. And because I do keto, um, I love butter anyhow, but I definitely do keto, put keto, put butter in my keto coffee, my bullet coffee, you guys sent me in questions going, what the heck are you putting in your coffee, girl? So that's all part of it. Even my pancakes were fried in butter this morning. So I thought, why not go ahead and finally take like the sticks of butter that are in the boxes in the refrigerator and put one into something pretty. So that worked out quite nice. Now at this point, before I get into the DIY project that I wanted to get into today, which is taking some awesome candle holders that I found and making them pretty and incorporating them into my house. I'll show you them in just a second. Me and Matt decided to go ahead and take a bike ride together. As you guys know, if you've been following the vlog, we just got bikes like in the last, maybe, I don't know, week and a half or so. And we try to get out for a bike ride every single day. Well, the last two days have been so rainy that it just hasn't been good weather for bike riding. So today it was still misting even this morning, but you know what, we said, let's just go ahead and if we get wet, Oh well, we ain't sugar, we ain't gonna melt. It was an awesome ride. I kid you not, I saw deer. I saw an orange salamander. There were chipmunks everywhere playing chicken with the bike bikes. And then this happened, okay? So I stopped to take some footage to show you because you guys have asked, well, Sonia, can we see kind of like where you ride bike to and stuff? And so this is the, one of my trails here behind my house that I love to go on. Take a look, this is what it looked like. We've had lots of rain in this area. This is a big tree that's down, a big stump right here behind the greenery. And up ahead, you will see a mat. Hey, Matt. What a beautiful day on the trail. Now, okay, about probably, I don't know, a minute up the path after I put my phone in to get back on my bike again, I am there with Matt and we're kind of riding side by side on this paved bike trail. And at first I'm like, is that a stick? And then Matt goes, that's a snake. And yeah, so if you're ready to see a husband and wife on a trail in the middle of the woods, just basically uh, me, the wife, being like, dude, get away, no, don't touch it. Um, yeah, get ready for this because yes, there was a snake on the trail today. And I've often heard of people biking and like seeing snakes that like come across the road. I'm like, what would I ever do? Like, do they strike at you? Matt actually wanted me to pass it. I'm like, there is no way in heck because you know, I was afraid that thing would lunge at me or something like that. And um, growing up on an island where I did Newfoundland, we don't have any snakes. And so I've only seen movies like Snakes on a Plane. I know what happens in Anaconda. You know what I'm saying? Well, this just made the bike trip a whole lot more exciting. Guys, look, I was like, what is that? And Matt's like, snake. Oh my gosh. Is it a black snake? Yep. Holy moly. He wants to move. Doesn't it look just like a stick on a trail? Yeah. Oh, Matt, no, no, no. He comes back towards me. That's not gonna be good. Matt, please, oh my gosh. This might be the end of the trail for me today. Oh my gosh, Matt. Go, guys. Go. Matt, oh my gosh, he wants to strike you. Okay, no, 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 do not proceed ahead. Matt, there is no way. Oh my god. I told you black snakes get frisky. That's why I want to use a stick. Okay, I'm turning around right now. This is how this saga ends. We are turning around. Bye bye. See you later. That's what's happened, guys, just so you know if you're watching this. Oh my gosh. I 
was just like, seriously, I was like hauling my bike to go the other way. Like, dude, we ain't doing it. Like, stop. This is the marker. This is where we stop. The snake is the marker. We ain't going to push it. And guys, even when I turned this video off, Matt, of course, was still trying to push it by trying to like spur the snake to move off the side of the road, just touching it a little bit with his wheel to try to get it to edge on and move on there, buddy. And, uh, and I kid you not, I've never seen a snake. It continued to coil up and to actually, it tried to, uh, not try to, it did. It was, uh, what's it called, striking, right? It was striking at Matt's tire. Oh my gosh. Well, I never pedaled so fast uh, in all my life. But then that wasn't the entire excitement because on the way back, I decided to run over a groundhog and crash my bike. Now there is no footage of this, only scrapes, and bruises and a swollen hand right now, but thank gosh, it's not my paint hand. Yeah, when we were biking last week, Matt, we went through the brush and you know how sometimes, I guess when you have two people on a bike and one person goes past some bushes where there might be a critter, they get spooked and by the time they run out, the second person is behind them and they get it, right? Well, that happened last week when I was going ahead of Matt and um, I guess I spooked a groundhog that was in the side brush and as soon as I passed him, he came out and Matt had to actually like kick him with his foot because the thing ran, ran right into his pedals. And we were laughing and I remember looking back, but the thing is he just like sort of ran into the pedal and then went under the bike and went all the way through the other side. I remember looking back, Matt like give this, give, gave this big yelp out and uh, it got to the other side, you know, we were worried like hopefully it's okay. And Matt was okay, he didn't fall off his bike or anything like that. So then Matt decides this week to go ahead and says we need some shin guards like these things that you pull up on over your legs because if you're like us and we're wearing shorts right now but like biker shorts um you know that to protect your legs and i'm like oh come on the chances of a groundhog yeah right like that is just crazy just crazy stuff like that happens to matt well today it happened to me except the groundhog didn't come right from my pedal it literally came right from my front wheel and so matt was ahead of me i saw him come out the groundhog and i squished on my brakes real fast it, my bike even like squealed you know when you get the the squeal that comes out of your bike because you hit the brake so quick and i kid you not the groundhog still kept running for me to the point with me trying to swerve my bike wheel ran over the groundhog and as the groundhog continued to go across the road under my bike wheel my bike went sideways and so did i and i completely busted my butt fell on the ground and I, like I said I've got lots of uh, scrapes on my leg and stuff like that really sore landed on my side and grabbed my or caught myself with my hand thank goodness I had like heavy you know mad hooks us up so I'm thankful for that I got the gloves that he told me I should anyway I think that starting tomorrow's ride I am going to definitely wear the leg guards you know, you don't know what you don't know until you start like riding a bike and going lots of miles. Today we went 17 miles. So yeah, I guess there was a lot of critters in that far deep into the forest, but it was just a beautiful ride. We love it so much, but man, you live and learn. So a message to all, this is a PSA to all you guys out there, okay? If you're gonna do some serious biking and do it a lot, you might wanna consider like the elbow pieces, the knee pads, all that sort of stuff, right? We do have the helmets, but now it's maybe realized I need a few more parts. So if you pass me on the bike trail and I look like I have a suit of armor on, just know, girl hit a groundhog, that's why. And now she dresses like this. <laughs> I kid you not. You know, when I saw the orange salamander, I thought that would be the highlight, but no, no. Okay, so that's enough about me, the snake, and the groundhog. Let's go ahead and get into today's DIY. So these are the candle holders right here, $2.99, and they were banded together, guys, and I got both of them for that price. I love it. They're heavy clunkers, oh my gosh. And now I want to shine them up. I've got lots of brass, of course, throughout my house. So the brass that we brought that we bought for these will also go on to help us with a lot of other projects as well. But this is gonna be my first time shining some brass up. So Matt's gonna give me some tips. So we're gonna, I'm out in the garage at this point and we're gonna get ready to make these girls shine. This is actually the piece that I'm going to be working on today on this 
this evening's show of DIY with Home Talk, the world's largest online DIY community. Hopefully you guys have been following me over there and it was really cool because I got to announce this week that I now will have my own continuing show on DIY with Home Talk and it's all about painting and being your painting coach. So magically, by the time this vlog is done tonight and I put it up for you guys to watch, this piece this piece will have a whole new look. It's like I'll be, I'll be able to wave my magic wand and she'll be done. And I'm gonna do Boom, some. she is done, like I told you. Just like that, a little elbow grease, a little vision, and a little jump monkey paint. So this right here is done with our Bahama Jade, one coat, shabby chip brush, distressed and sealed with banana peel poly. And of course, this was a chair that we did as well. And this one's in antique lace. This is a pillow that you guys gave me. I love, 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 love. And um, I'm just gonna pair it in the same space. I think it will look really sweet super cool together. What do you guys think? Oh yeah, she is a beauty. But let's not leave these guys right here out of the whole situation. I'm gonna get my camera set up and we are gonna brasso, my friends. All right guys, so I found some gloves. This is a good thing, right Matt? I just want, I don't know what yeah, happens yeah. when you get brass on your hands, no. right? I'm following Matt's lead here today because he tells me he's used lots of this stuff when he was in the military. How would you have used it? You use it for your belt buckles and everything else. Oh, really? Yeah, you use it to the point where you wear the brass out, yeah. <laughs> All right, so these are brass, right? Yes, those are brass. All right, show me what I gotta do, so. We'll find out quickly if they're not brass. I went ahead and I cut one of these just cheap washcloths in half because according to the instructions, I have to rub it on and buff it off. Yep. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so this is gonna turn black. It's gonna turn black? Yeah, because it's taking all the... What? All the tarnish? Yep. Can you smell that? Mm. Oh, that's strong. Yeah, yeah. We used to get it in felt, like you'd rip it off and come in a can and you'd rip it off. See how that's turned black? Yeah. So what exactly is happening right now? Uh, chemical reaction. It's eating the tarnish off of... Really? Uh, Do you need the gloves? I'm with the gloves yeah. and you don't have any. Nah, uh, you just wash your hands afterwards. Okay. I just have sensitive skin, guys. I am somebody who, <laughs> like... Uh, I feel like when I deal with chemicals, I want to make sure that my hands are protected. Matt, he's just like all in there. Well, I can tell you right now, that this is not brass. It's not? Nope, and it's not going to shine. Oh, what do you think that it is? That is a faux finish on a piece of, me piece of uh, metal. Is it really? Like a like piece of junk steel. They're so yeah. heavy. So you think yeah, it made it of like yeah. steel or something? Yeah, but... they're just pot steel, pot metal or steel. And... Uh, yeah, that's just spray paint. Yeah, it's not going to go anywhere. So we're going to take this. Yep. I'm going to go like this. Yep. And that's how you take brass off is by doing stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So. It is kind of cool with the black that showed through right there. Yeah. I'm all about that. All right, let me pull this up so you guys can see what Matt's doing right here. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't do a whole heck of a lot because, like I said, this is actually spray paint. Yep. There's a black coat. And then they spray painted the gold over top of that to give it oh. like a distressed look. So she becomes gold. Wah, wah. She's still beautiful. I love her. Wah, wah, wah. So you're better off just, just maybe... taking a general cleaner. Yeah. And cleaning them up. Okay, let's try that. So we'll save the brasso for the actual real brass stuff in the house. Gotcha. Well, thank you for this lesson, Matt. You're right. Like, lesson learned. Yeah. All right, now to figure out what we're gonna do with these. So many possibilities. I mean, now, if I really wanted to, I could even like paint them white or something, you know? Hmm. Let's see what we do. Okay, so I went to my cleaner stash and I'm like, maybe some glass cleaner, but Matt suggested this probably would work really well. 409. So I'm gonna go ahead, just use my, basically this is just an all-purpose cleaner. And since we know that these are just faux painted, at the end of the day, we're just gonna clean them up.
Now remember those two candles that we got at the dollar store. We are going to pop those open. And I think that they would look really pretty on the top of here. What do you guys think? These smell like fresh linen. Mmm, actually smell really good. What's your favorite scent, guys, when you buy candles and stuff like that? The fresh scents have been growing on me. I've always been a sweet, like the vanilla and the chais and the coffee and the fudge brownies and everything that sounds like desserts. Um, but I have to tell you, these nice clean scents have been definitely growing on me. So isn't that awesome? Let's go find a place for these. Okay guys, I've now decided on not one but two but three places, okay, that I can potentially put it. So we can put it over here next to this chippy piece that we just did, did this past week. And you see how I have my gold frame right here. I could do these as like two little step, step down pieces right there. So tell me if your vote is for them to be like right around here, if you like the dining room idea. This, this would be the other place right here in the dining room. We got our white piece over here in the corner and we kind of like put something off to the side right there to just like, you see what I'm saying? Like a little step down. So the third place, of course, or guys, we're here in the bedroom. You'll remember this vlog where we, we did these, we painted these two white ones. Needed to add some more to the candle cluster. So what do you guys think? Should I put it here and make it a part of this cluster? All right, I'm going to want to know what you guys think. Bedroom? or next to the long table in the dining room or next to the high hutch in the dining room. Hmm. Hmm. Hello, Stanley. Which one do you like best? Which one do you like best? You just like the rug? You just like the rug. And do I care if they were real brass or not? Nope, absolutely not. I look at pieces and I look at them for their beauty and for their potential beauty. And honestly, I never look at, you know, whether or not they're precious metals or anything like that. At the end of the day, I got two awesome candle holders that are beautiful and they are done in brass style, which still matches my house beautifully. And to anybody else looking at them, they'll probably think that they are brass because it fooled us too. Thank you guys for subscribing and hanging out here on my daily vlog. I certainly appreciate it. I'll be back again tomorrow, of course. Give me a big thumbs up and leave me a comment below. What was your greatest biking adventure or wilderness adventure or outdoors adventure? Do you have one that's memorable? Because yeah, running over a groundhog and uh, trying to shoo a snake off the path. Yeah, I'll never forget that. See you guys tomorrow. Bye. Go paint something, will ya?